The question is, speed of liquid coming out through a hole at depth H below the free surface depends on, and the options are pressure at point P, pressure at point O, depth H, or all of these. All right, so we are talking about speed of efflux, and what is the formula for speed of efflux? It is V is equal to under root of 2GH. So from the formula, we can see that it is only going to depend on H. And that is the mistake we can make when we know the formula, but we don't know what is the story behind the formula. What are the assumptions that were made to arrive at that formula? And that is very, very important to know. Okay, so I'm going to throw some light on that assumption because that is very important to remember as well. Okay, so I'm calling this point one and I'm calling this hole to be the point two. So Bernoulli's equation tells me that P1 plus rho g h1 plus half rho v1 square should be equal to p2 plus rho g h2 plus half rho v2 square. This is Bernoulli's equation. So naturally this height, I'm taking it as h, I'm taking this surface as the reference level and this height I'm taking it as h2. Now if we rearrange the terms a bit, we're going to get p1 minus p2 plus rho g h1 minus h2 and this will be equal to half rho v2 square minus v1 square. All right. Now there are two very important assumptions that we take here. One, we assume that this surface as well as this hole are exposed to the atmosphere, which means that the pressure at both these points would be equal to the atmospheric pressure. Hence p1 minus p2 becomes zero plus rho g and what is h1 minus h2? h1 minus h2 would be simply h and this is equal to half rho v2 square minus v1 square. Now there's the second assumption that we take that let's say that the area of this hole is a2 and the area of this surface is a1. We assume that a2 is much much less than a1 and that gives me the relationship that v2 is much much greater than v1. Okay, so from there we get rho gh is equal to half rho and v1 square can be neglected and this becomes v2 square. Hence, we get v2 is equal to under root 2gh. So we arrived at this formula, but with two assumptions. One, the pressure at the top surface as well as at the hole is the same, number one assumption. And the number two assumption is that the area of the hole is much, much smaller than the free surface on the top. Those under those two conditions or assumptions, this formula is valid. Otherwise, it is not going to be valid. Okay, and nothing of that sort is given in the question, which means that the speed of efflux, which is V2, is going to depend on P1, which is the pressure at this point, is going to depend on P2, which is the pressure at this point, and is going to depend on the height H or the depth H below the free surface, right? So, because we have not been given any of those conditions, my answer has to be all of these. And the correct option is going to be option D. Viscous drag force depends on A, size of the body, velocity with which it moves, viscosity of fluid or all of the above. All right, so when an object is moving inside a fluid which has viscosity, then it experiences a drag force. And that drag force is equal to 6 pi mu rv. What is mu? Mu is the viscosity of the fluid. What is r? r is the radius of the spherical object which is moving inside the fluid and v is the speed with which it is moving inside the fluid. All right, this is Stokes law and so what are going to be my right options? So size of the body, of course, because it depends on the radius. Velocity with which it moves, yes. Viscosity of fluid, of course. So the correct option in this case is going to be option D, all of the above. Water is allowed to come out of a hole P in one of the walls at depth H1, below the surface of water. Express the horizontal distance covered by water jet in terms of H1 and H2. Assume that the area of the hole at P is small compared to the top of the vessel. All right, so here this surface is exposed to the atmosphere. This surface or this hole is also exposed to the atmosphere because it's, it's an open surface. Water is coming out of it. 
okay so the pressure at both the points is going to be equal to the atmospheric pressure which is the same and we are also given the assumption that area of the hole at p is much much smaller compared to the top of the vessel right which means that i now have the liberty of using the equation for speed of efflux so speed of efflux is given by under root of 2g h okay and what is h h is the depth from the free surface in this case h1 is the depth from the free surface so this becomes 2g h1 all right so that's the speed with which this water jet is going to come out but what do we need to calculate we need to calculate this horizontal range so we are going to call upon kinematics to solve this for us okay so it's a two dimensional motion so we'll have to break this up into two horizontal and vertical components and solve it that's simple we have done this a lot of times okay so if i have to find the horizontal range then this will be equal to the horizontal velocity which is going to be v because at this point it only has horizontal velocity does not have any vertical velocity so r is equal to velocity times t which means the time taken for it to reach the bottom okay now we know v but we do not know t okay we can take the help of the vertical motion to calculate t how we are going to do that so i can say y the vertical displacement is equal to uyt plus half ayt square all right so what is the vertical displacement vertical displacement is h2 what is the vertical velocity it is zero because at the point it is coming out of the hole it does not have any vertical velocity plus half vertical acceleration is going to be g multiplied by t square so t is going to be 2h2 upon g under root right so we have figured out what the time is now all we need to do is do the substitution find the answer so velocity is 2 gh1 under root multiplied by time is under root of 2h2 upon g g gets cancelled and i am left with 2 is going to come out of the square root and we'll have h1 into h2 and that is going to be my answer and from neat point of view it is a handy result to remember because you get questions based on this okay so let's have a look at the options and so option b is going to be the correct option an open tank is filled with water up to a height of 8 meter a hole p is made in the wall of tank such that water coming out of it travels maximum horizontal distance find the speed of water coming out of hole p assume that the area of the hole at p is small compared to the top of the vessel all right so this vessel is filled with fluid up to height 8 meter and this hole is at such a depth that the horizontal distance covered by this fluid is maximum okay we have also been given two assumptions one it is an open tank which means the pressure here is going to be the atmospheric pressure the here the pressure here also is going to be atmospheric pressure hence the pressure at both the points is same also the area of the hole is much much less than the area of the top of the vessel which gives me the liberty to use speed of efflux is equal to under root of 2g h all right now i'm going to assume this distance to be h prime which means h plus h prime has to be equal to 8 meter all right perfect now what is the range we have al actually calculated that and that is 2 multiplied by under root of h1 into h2 okay perfect so i can write the range as 2 into under root of h multiplied by h prime so if this r has to be maximum then the product of h and h prime has to be maximum now what we know is that h and h prime has a fixed sum which means their sum is equal to 8 now if i have to maximize their product then how should i split this 8 between h and h prime and that is a very simple question to answer we already know that that if the product has to be maximized then both the numbers have to be equal which means that the maximum product is going to be at h is equal to h prime which obviously is going to be equal to 4 meter right so when this h is 4 meter i am going to get maximum range which means that the speed of efflux is going to become under root of 2g and what is h it is 4 hence i'm going to get 2 under root of 2g 
All right, and that should be my answer. Now let's have a look at the options. And naturally, option C is going to be the right answer. An open tank is filled with water and two holes A and B are made in it. For getting same range, ratio of H prime by H is, and there's an assumption that the area of hole at A and B is small compared to the top of the vessel. All right, so what is the situation? So one hole is at a depth H prime from the surface and one hole is at a height H from the bottom of the vessel. Now both of them have the same range. Perfect. So we have to find out what is the ratio of H prime and H. And there are two assumptions. It is an open tank, hence the pressure here and the pressures here are same equal to atmospheric pressure and also the whole area is much much less than the top of the vessel which means I can use the formula for speed of efflux. All right, perfect. So let's say this distance between A and B, I'm calling that X, okay? Now can I say that the range for B, okay, the range for the water jet coming out of hole B has to be equal to Two multiplied by under root of h prime multiplied by this quantity which is x plus h so we know that range is equal to 2 into h1 into h2 i'm sorry 2 into under root of h1 into h2 so this becomes 2 into under root of h prime into x plus h all right this is the range for the water jet coming out of hole b what is the range for the water jet coming out of hole a so that is going to be 2. Now this hole A is at what depth? It is at a depth of H prime plus X. So this becomes H prime plus X and then multiplied by H2 which is nothing but H. Simple. Now under this condition we know that the range is the same which means I can equate these two ranges. Okay so that's what I'm going to do. So this becomes 2 of under root of h prime into x plus h. This is equal to 2 into under root of h into h prime plus x. Okay, so 2 goes away and I'm going to take a square on both sides and it is going to give me h prime into x plus h into h prime and this should be equal to h into h prime plus h into x. All right, what do I see? h h prime cancels x cancels and I'm left with H prime upon H is equal to 1, which means both of them have to be equal to give me the same range. All right, let's have a look at the options. So naturally option B is going to be the right option.